My name is Vince McMahon, standing to my right, wrestling's living legend, Bruno Sammartino, where Bruno this week will see the tag team combination of Chief J. Strongbow and Dominic Dinucci. Hey, Dinucci and Strongbow should be exciting as a team. They've never, I don't, not they haven't had much tag team part, work together, but I'm looking forward to it, and I think the fans should enjoy this one. Also scheduled this week, uh, we'll take another look at Big Sweet Hansen. I'll tell you, Sweet Hansen is a mean, mean, powerful man, and he's meeting Sanchez, who's a good friend of mine, and I hate to see this bout. Also scheduled uh, is the suplex specialist, the great Hussein, who will join us, and then in tag team competition again, the combination a couple of weeks ago that was very, very impressive, that of Tito Santana and Ivan Putski. Hey, Vince, I think Putski and Santana as a team, I think they're a real treat. The fans are going to love this combination because they were just, they were meant for each other. They're just fantastic. So we shall return with our first tag team match when All-Star Wrestling continues. The following wrestling exhibition requires discretionary viewer participation. Welcome to another action-packed part of All-Star Wrestling. These matches are sanctioned and supervised by the State Athletic Commission. Chief Deputy Commissioner is Nick Santoro. Timekeeper at the bell, Mike Bittman. The attending physician is Dr. John Woods. Referees for this hour are Dick Worley, Mario Savoldi, Gilberto Roman, and John Stanley. And I'm your ring announcer for All-Star Wrestling, Gary Capetta. The first match is set for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing from Puerto Rico, 238 pounds, Gypsy Rodriguez and his partner from Canada, 287 pounds, Moose Monroe. And their opponents from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 267 pounds, Dominic DiNucci. And his partner from Pahuska, Oklahoma, 248 pounds, Chief Jay Strongbow. Jay Strongbow, Dominic DiNucci, two very good friends. Should make uh, two fine tag team partners here, and we're set for the action to commence. Moose locking up with uh, Dominic DiNucci. A couple of weeks ago, we saw Moose Monroe Bruno uh, display quite a bit of uh, surprising speed. Uh, he was really going. Against Teddy DiBiase, which was really surprising because I'd never seen him, at least up to that point, uh, move with any kind of quickness. And at that time, he really, really did. Let's see if he shows a little bit more of it. Uh, thus far with DiNucci, uh, looks like the old Moose Monroe, at least so far anyway. Monroe and his partner, Gypsy Rodriguez, combining forces. There may be some sort of object there Monroe was using. Dominic's going to check things out. <laughs> Is he ever? Moose Monroe uh, with a forearm smash in the chest area. He strikes uh, it, the blow that he strikes, the forearm smash is sort of a clumsy blow, isn't it, Bruno? He does not know how to put his weight behind him. He's a big 300 pounder. If he knew how to put his weight behind him and if he threw him with, with more speed, harder, it would be much more effective. As it was, he hardly uh, bothered Dominic at all. He didn't hurt Danucci at all. Dominic with the, the gypsy there in the corner, and Dominic certainly knows how to put his weight behind him. Oh, extending the proboscis a bit. Monroe was not anxious to tag uh, Gypsy Rodriguez to step back through the ropes, but rather was uh, content on giving Mr. Rodriguez, his partner, a little advice. <laughs> yes. 
I'm sure that with the advice he gave him, Danucci and Strongborg are going to be in real serious trouble. <laughs> Uh, incidentally, as we stated last week, we would keep you abreast as to the condition of Frank uh, Williams, who suffered the neck injury recently at the hands of uh, Big Sweet Hanson as a result of the pile driver. Frank Williams is going to be all right. There was a time there, Bruno, as you well know, that uh, uh, the preliminary report was uh, a possible broken neck. I'll tell you, when I heard that, I was sick. Uh, I, I felt so terrible. But thank goodness it was not a broken neck, which, by the way, he was an extremely lucky guy that it was not a broken neck because he came very, very close, as I'm sure the doctors have reported. But as you said, thank God it was not, and so he should be back, I imagine, before too, too long. I think uh, the medical team will keep him out for several weeks, if not a, a month or so. I'll tell you, Vince, in a way, he's a very lucky man because there have been people that uh, have been pal drived by Hansen that have had their necks broken their careers have absolutely ended. So Williams unfortunately that he had to go through that but uh, still in all he is going to come back. He will be able to recuperate. So in that sense he's been a very lucky man. So our best wishes uh, to Frank Williams. Keep on your mending ways Mr. Williams. We look forward to your returning to all star wrestling. Strongwell back to the corner now. Look at Monroe. Look how awkward he is. He really, he's just about as awkward as a moose, isn't he, Bruno? And just as intelligent. <laughs> sort of favors a moose uh, <laughs> <laughs> facially as well, doesn't he? Oh, my. For a big, big man, I'll tell you, he, uh, he lacks. I'm afraid he lacks. He lacks quite a bit. Monroe, just enough to really uh, annoy you. Not really a great threat uh, to do any permanent damage or anything, but uh, certainly a, an annoying type. <laughs> and Dominic knows how to take care of people like that. A scoop. Will they get him up? Will they get? Yes, sir. Dominic puts a three count on Moose Monroe. It appeared though that uh, Monroe was coming up. Bruno, I don't know whether we got the three count on Monroe or not. Very close call. Very, very close. Wait a minute. Whoa, Monroe whipped to the ring and out there is getting ready to get into the ring. Is it over or isn't it over? Well, apparently, Strongwell and Danucci want to have a little fun with the moose. The time of the match, five minutes, 51 seconds, and your winners, the team of Dominic Danucci and Chief Jay Strongbow. Strongbow and Inochi victorious. Let's go back now, Bruno, and take a look at action we saw there in the latter stages of the contest. Of course, there was no doubt that Moose Monroe uh, was having his problems all the way through. Danucci caught him with a slam, and he's covering him. He kind of want to. Just as he's saying three, Moose Monroe had kicked out. Now the question is, was his shoulder off the mat or not? I, I obviously, it was not because the referee gave it a three count. We shall return with more wrestling action in a moment. The following attraction is set for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing first the manager, the Hollywood fashion play, Classy Fred Lassie. In the corner to my right, weighing 239 pounds from Brooklyn, New York, Pete Sanchez. And his opponent, 307 pounds from Slaughter's Creek, North Carolina, Swede Hansen. He's a main one, Sweet Hansen. Sort of a hillbilly type, I think. 
Abella's rug and we're set for action to commence here in the opening match. Now, what you don't do is mess around with old Pete. Now, he has a lot of fire, Bruno. That's right. And he, I think he's, he shocked hands a little bit because he really caught him with a tremendous ride. And not that it really hurt Sweet that that badly, but it, but it hurt enough to, to surprise him because ordinarily he would take an opponent and say, come on, do it again. See if you can hit me harder. He didn't do it with Sanchez. Yeah, good to hear that by Big Sweet Hansen. Sanchez back to his feet, uh, trying to power his way out of it. Surprisingly, he's doing all right again. A yank of the hair. Surely, Bruno Hansen is stronger than Sanchez. Although we we have it, you would not note that he is as a result of what's just happened. Now Sanchez is a fine athlete. He's got speed. He's got strength. But you know, and Pete's a very good friend of mine. But no way, I can't compare his strength to with Sweet Anson. Sweet Anson's a very, very strong guy. He's uh, well, you know, he weighs over 300 pounds and he's solid. There's not much fat on him at all. He's just a big, raw-boned individual. He's got enormous strength. And uh, Pete may have, a, have the edge on speed, uh, but as far as strength, um, I hate, I'm sorry to say, but no way. Arms smashed by Sanchez, landing in the chest area. Right hand. And now we see the big man from Slaughter Creek backing up a bit. However, we clearly see from our vantage point a chokehold. Distracted there by Fred Blassie. Sanchez with a left, another clip uh, of the chin there by Sanchez. And again, now we see the big man backing, uh, backing up a bit. So far, it's the first time we've ever seen him back up from anybody throwing fists at him. And again, not because uh, Sanchez's fists. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, look at the big man. He's hurt. Sanchez off. Uh uh, but caught. Now for two, it's over. Unusual maneuver there, Bruno. Yeah, that was a weird, weird one. It wasn't a suplex. It wasn't a hip toss. I don't know. He just, with pure strength, just scooped him up and turned him over and came down on a full weight, knocked the wind out of Pete and pinned him. The time of the match, 4 minutes, 11 seconds, and your winner, Swede Hansen. So the big Swede backed up a bit. He knows he's been in a match there with Pete Sanchez. And for the first time, Bruno, as you brought out, we saw Hanson backing up a bit. Uh, Hanson, when he hit the buckle, my goodness, I thought the whole ring was coming down. But now let's go back and take a look at that most unusual hold. Yes, I like to study it closer, too, because, like I said, it was neither a suplex a a pile, nor a, uh, a hip toss. Now, you see, he hooks him like he's going to suplex him. 
He hooked him real well, but now watch it. He picks him up. And let's see what he does here. Picks him up, and then he just flips oh, him over. But golly, that's the, the twisting uh, action uh, uh, alone would be enough to kind of wrench the back. That's right. And then he really drove him down hard and not completely knocked the wind out of Sanchez and pinned him. So we shall return uh, with more wrestling with a special interview in a moment. Well, I beg your pardon? I said, very good, Swede. You know, everybody's got the name of Sweet Hansen on the tip of their tongue because this man has got the longest string of victories, put more fellas in a hospital, and I guarantee you, we couldn't be happier. Some of them have had their neck cracked. <laughs> you know, I enjoy that. I enjoy seeing a guy with a, in a cast from his neck down to his knees, just laying there, not able to move or anything, have to be fed through a straw. <laughs> and done by Sweet Hansen, a man that I manage. <laughs> You know, to be successful in anything, like war or any other big business. Yeah, war or any other That's right. You got to have a smart manager to plan the attack. And then you drum one thing in their mind, win, win, win. I didn't have to do that with Sweet Hansen because he has the power to think for himself. And he has the desire and the will to win, 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 win. And he will not stop until he's got all the rest of these pencil necks here on the East Coast in the hospital. And that goes for your world, tag, world champion and that other pencil neck geek, your cohort over there, Bruno San Martino, Bob Backlund. Now wait just a minute. Uh, recently, Sweet Hansen has not met the greatest caliber of competition. Are you kidding? Not on television. One, not... McMahon, I spend a great deal of money to get the best array of talent I can for my men. And what do you call a man that he beat here tonight? Well, you're all right. Ricky Dink? Not hardly. Pete That's Sanchez right. Sanchez is a fine wrestler. A That's right. Back. He's a great wrestler. All right. We saw Sweet Hansen backing up several times in that match. That referee was pushing Sweet Hansen. Tell him, Sweet. That was a strategic retreat, McMahon. I've always given away a little bit to get what I want, and you notice I got what I wanted. In the end, it was Sweet Hansen on top, but naturally. Again, when Hansen <laughs> hit the buckle over in the corner, I thought the whole ring was going to come down. But you didn't see him flinch or anything like that. He come right back, right? And he caught the man, and he didn't have to use his pile driver, as you seem to think that's the only hold that he has. Yeah. Huh? Well, what type of hold was that that uh, you polished that off? That was your... a neck breaker. I've got all kinds of different ways to hurt the neck. To hurt the neck. Understand me there, San Martino? Backlund? Anybody? Santana? Strongbow? But and I'm not stopping there. Patterson, Volkov, anybody. I don't care who it is. When I'm in there, I have not one friend. I'm by myself. I don't need anybody. In the ring, I'm the one. And I'm the only one. And I'll always be the only one. Legend, you're no legend. Go down south and ask the people who a legend is. Go on. Go down to Slaughter Creek and ask them who the legend is. They'll tell you. Why use holds to devastate the neck? A figure because I like to hurt people, McMahon, the way I've been hurt since I've gotten into professional wow. wrestling. And I'm going to hurt anybody I can in now the course of getting that championship you're, belt. You're one of the biggest, one of the most rugged individuals to ever step into the squared circle. You don't have to resort to the tactics to win that you resort I to. resort to anything I want to win. You don't tell me how to wrestle. I'm the one that's in the ring. You're not the one that's getting punched around. I'm the one that's getting punched around. Why specialize again in the neck holds with the exception of the fact that you delight in seeing individuals punished? It seems to me that perhaps an arm hold, a figure four leg lock, something that's going to hurt someone. Yes, submission holds are illegal in pro wrestling. Yeah, but an arm hold and a leg hold won't cripple a man for life. An arm hold and a leg hold will heal up. But when you break their neck, it puts a little bit of fear in their mind. You know, the neck is never as strong as it was before it was broken. Ask Bruno San Martino. <laughs> Bob Backlund, you're next. Classy man, I want to ask you a question, classy man. What happened to San Martino's neck? Who was the one that did it? I <laughs> tell him. I believe it was another Hanson that I managed. <laughs> but now I've got the vicious Hanson. This is the man I've been looking for. This is the man that I wanted. And I was able to obtain him. 
Yeah, that was a man that I got on the, on the John Henry. Put his name right on the John Henry on you contract. stupid imbeciles. And this is a man that's going to make me more that's money than any wrestler I've ever managed. Backlund, As I said before, his name is on the oh, lip no. of everybody that's been watching wrestling. All they can think I of is Sweet Hansen. Sweet Hansen, Sweet Hansen. Sweet Hansen. We've got to get rid of him, but there's nobody able to get rid of him. Because nobody can take care of Sweet Thank Hansen. you for your time, Sweet Hansen, along with Fred Why Classy. Why some more time, Classy, man? I want to talk. We shall return right there. in just a moment. This match is set for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing in the corner to my right, from Puerto Rico, weighing 221 pounds, Johnny Rivera. And his opponent, accompanied by his manager, Fred Classy, Weighing 267 pounds, the great Hossein Arab of Iran. Should be quite a good match, and Hossein goes to work right away on Johnny Rivera. ago we saw Johnny Rivera against uh, Pat Patterson. He had a great match with Patterson. <laughs> it looks like Johnny's off to a good start against the greatest Hussein. Boy, he certainly did. Hussein went to back drop. He did that flip that he does. Came up with a beautiful drop kick. And I'll tell you that Hussein really went out flying. Time for a little consultation. The referee doesn't like it. Clean break, the referee call it work, clean break, and he doesn't get it. <laughs> Look at the impression that uh, Hussein is not in the match. I mean, you know, uh, let's let's keep uh, Everything. Oh, oh, look at it. Look how quickly he goes. That takes quite a bit of strength, doesn't it, Bruno? A lot of strength. A lot, a lot of strength. Oh, that takes a lot, too, after you get hit with a old like that to, to kick out as he just did. Going to a bridge and stand right up. Tell you, Johnny does that like nobody I've ever seen. He can be in a pent position and just going to a bridge and smooths himself right under from underneath his opponent and right up on his feet. to the chest area and uh, Hussein has a little uh, laugh to himself. Hussein now making fun of uh, Johnny Rivera. Hussein solid as a rock and not an ounce of fat on him. But he has one of those physiques Bruno that uh, he has like a, a sort of a rounded type midsection, but it's as solid as a rock. Oh. That kick proves it. His body feels like concrete, Vince. Like I said, hard as a rock is right. Very, very strong. Hussein absolutely dedicating his life uh, to the world of uh, wrestling all the way from uh, I wonder when he really did start uh, wrestling in the amateurs Bruno he must have must have been a very very young age he started uh, as a baby he was like six seven years of age that's uh, that's how early they started him uh, in Iran and uh, by the time he was uh, 13 years of age this guy was winning um, you know uh, like in the states state meets so to speak and so by the time he was 15 it was a national event so by the time he was 17 he was competing in the world tournaments
Johnny Rivera whipped to the ropes. Whoa! My goodness! Unbelievable back body drop, two and no. All right, Johnny able to kick out. I know that back body drop, no exaggeration, had to be at least 10 feet in the air. Coming down so solid, yet can you imagine he got a, kick, a, a knee in the head and he still got up. Put the ass, one, two. Hussein rolls to the outside. Rivera with a cut mouth. After that back body drop, if you remember, Bruno, from there, Hossein came down with a knee right in the mouth of Johnny Rivera, and his lips are bloodied. Well, he, he came down hard, and like you say, right in his face, across his mouth and the nose. Uh, at first, I thought it might have been the nose, but it is the mouth that he's bleeding from. Or the inside of the mouth, perhaps the tongue, I don't know. Now, bleeding from the mouth, I would think, uh, ooh, that forearm smash almost knocked Johnny Rivera over the top rope. Through the ropes, he falls into the hardwood floor. I think he may have a split lip, uh, Vince. He got a pretty good look at him on a mat, and his lip might be split. Johnny hauled back through there by Hussein. Uh-oh, look at this now. And Hussein has a big laugh. It's not over yet. Yes, you can see it coming, and there's no escape for it. No escape at all. Uh -huh. That's not Bruno San Martino on the canvas. Uh oh, there's uh, that bloody lip we alluded to earlier. Yeah, he, he may have a split lip. Uh, I hope Ruben. it's just a lip. I hope it's not internal bleeding. You know, you take those suplexes and. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm hoping that's what it is, too. Johnny's coming back strong. Come on, Johnny. On the slam. Rivera going to the outside. John Rivera climbing up to the top rope. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. I hope he didn't tear up his knee or hurt his ankle on that one, Vince. Hussein. But Johnny Rivera has him right where he wants him now. That could really be to death now. It's over. I'll tell you, I've seen some some fine competitors, but I'll tell you, you have to take your hat off to Johnny Rivera, don't you, Bruno? He's got the heart of a lion. I take my hat off to this guy. He's just a fantastic, fantastic competitor. After one devastating suplex, Hussein came down with a knee into the facial area. After that, another suplex. But in any event, Rivera kept coming. He kept plowing. He kept. Well, he was in the match all the way. The time of the match, 7 minutes, 31 seconds, and your winner, the great Hossein Arab. A referee trying to keep Hossein away from Rivera. Hossein has unquestionably proven his point here as to the devastating nature of the suplexes. Bruno, let's go back and take another look now. Well, over here, he throws Rivera across the ring here now. When Rivera comes flying over, he catches him with this tremendous backdrop. I mean, it just it goes out of sight. Unbelievable. I said 10 feet. I think uh, I think I was wrong. I think it's more like 12 or 13 feet. All right, uh, Johnny Rivera getting a hand here from the fans, but let's take a look at more action now, Bruno. And here we go with this. Uh, I think this was the final suplex he gave him. He really got him up high. And really, really brings him over and down, and I mean, he really drove him when uh, when he went backwards with him. And uh, 
And you can say uh, from that height what a tremendous impact it must have made. And of course, that caused Johnny the bout. But he certainly got the heart of a lion. We've got to take our hats off to him. So our hats off to Johnny Rivera. We shall return with the tag team combination of Ivan Putsky and Tito Santana. The next match is set for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. It is a special tag team attraction. Introducing team number one to my left from Brooklyn, New York, weighing 237 pounds, Jose Estrada. And his partner from Jersey City, New Jersey, 267 pounds, John Schmidt. And ladies and gentlemen, their opponents from Krakow, Poland, 248 pounds, Polish power, Ivan Putski. And his partner from Mexico City, Mexico, 248 pounds, Tito Santana. Santana and Putski getting it on here in tag team fashion. Here we go. Estrada staying, staying pretty close to the ropes. I suspect we'll see that uh, through the duration of the match. Unless uh, Mr. Estrada feels he has the upper hand. Nice execution of arm drags by Tito Santana. Tell you, Santana can really whip you down with that, can he, Bruno? He draws a beautiful arm drag. He really shoots his body underneath him quick, and of course, using the leverage to take uh, to take his opponent over. But he does with such lightning speed. It's just a beautiful thing to watch. And the compliment of Santana's speed and agility with Putski's strength and power uh, really is something, isn't it? Makes for a perfect combination because in a power department, they meet an opponent that have more power, this is where Putski comes in. When it comes to speed and all around durability, then you got Santana. So with the combination of two, they should be an unbeatable force. Santana really whipped in a rope, shoulder block. Tries it again off, leap block by Santana, whip and an arm drag takedown. Big John Smith uh, was making his way in, I believe. We saw the, the foot there. Forearm smash, Estrada will try uh, with the nice block by Estrada. From the far side, leap, oh, look at that, Santana so quick. You know, Bruno, when you're whipped down like that, you know, would enlighten the fans as to what the possible injuries are with the whip, with your weight coming over like that, full force on the arm and other parts of the body. Absolutely, on the shoulder area, the elbow area, the uh, the lower back, uh, uh, the upper back, everything. It's, it's a tremendous shock to the body. And again, a guy like Estrada takes these tremendous blows and keeps getting back up because, to his credit, because of the tremendous physical condition that he's in, always keeps himself in tip-top shape. Otherwise, there's no way that he could absorb those kind of blows. Estrada with a regular face there on Ivan Putski. And a right hand. Back to the corner, double-team effort now.
Double team effort continuing. Naga knocker. Estrada falls to the apron. I think actually it's supposed to be Estrada in there and not uh, John Smith. Oh my. Crawling ever so slowly back to the ropes, back to his feet now is John Smith. Not too anxious to tie up with Ivan Putsky. And can't really blame him because he's tall, but that's all when it comes to <laughs> comparing with uh, Ivan Putsky. Putsky rolls him over. Again, as we said a couple of weeks ago, that slow roll over the side like that, that can really hurt the neck, Bruno. Absolutely. That's it's worse. It's better when a guy takes you over quicker. Well, he's finding a way out now by putting his foot through the ropes because it's about the only way he's going to get away from uh, Putski's mighty arms. Putski using a, a lot of just brute strength uh, in his match. Right? That time, it's exactly what it was. It was just brute power. No finesse there. I mean, it was just power. <laughs> Especially at that old, no finesse whatsoever. Just sheer strength. And he's got plenty of it. Another thing that you know, Ivan has uh, since dropping the weight, not only the strength, but he has the stamina to go with it. I mean, you'll see Ivan just as fresh uh, after 15 minutes in a match as you would uh, the first five. Whereas before, when he was 280 or 290, whatever he was, he would uh, come up and show some fire, but then he would have to put on a hold on someone and with the strength hold him because I think you actually run a little bit out of uh, out of wind. But now he can keep on going. He certainly can, and John Smith knows it. Putski with those massive, powerful legs. Once he starts driving you, you're going right where he wants to go. Again, brute power right there. Exactly, because the proper way, really, you shoot your hip underneath the man and, that, and then let your own body take him over. But he just throws him over brute strength. Look out, there it is! Santana chasing his trot on the referee, puts a three count on Big John Smith. Full of ropes. Yes, indeed. Ivan Putski and Tito Santana victorious. Let's get the official time. The time of the match, six minutes, 37 seconds. And your winners, the team of Ivan Putski and Tito Santana. Putski and Santana victorious. Let's go back now and take a look at action we saw in the latter stages. Here we go. Big John Smith rolled. And here comes Putski getting additional momentum. I'm telling you, Putski drives those legs and just crunches right down into the chest. <laughs> it's lights out for Big John Smith. Let's go to Bruno Sammartino. Ladies and gentlemen, Tito Santana and Ivan Putski. Hello, Bruno. Hey, hello, guys. Hey, listen, that was terrific. You guys just displayed that Vince and I were talking about what you guys have to offer in that ring. And in, uh, as we said before, in Santana here, Tremendous speed, agility, oh. quickness he's, galore. He's got it all. And when it comes to working out, Bruno. when it comes to the superpower, of course you're there. And Vince and I were saying that any combination that you may meet, if they're known for their strength or their agility or whatever, you guys can meet them each direction. This and this has got to make you guys it. really go all the way. Yes, you're very right, Bruno. See, this is why I picked this man. The man knows wrestling. He knows the moves. He's like a cat, you know. And then when you need the power. I'm going to bring the power in, so you cannot lose with a combination like this. Right, Tito? Right, baby. Come on, stop. I, I feel like you 100%, Putski. Buddy, as far as I'm concerned, you're the most powerful guy. Oh, thank you. It's, that I've been around. You're the best I've seen. That's and, why you're uh, my partner, right, Reno? And well, we're the best I'd announcer, to, too. Hey, this used to be a world champion. As far as I'm concerned, he still is. I'd have to, right? say, I'd have to say it. I'm standing beside, beside the two greatest guys I've ever met in my life. Well, you're right there. And I'm so happy to be teamed up with you. And we're going to put it together. 
I guarantee you. That's right. Well, look, well, I'll tell you, the way you guys work together, I think if the opportunity presents that where you do have a crack at the title, I think that the fans all agree, and I know I feel it, that you guys should take those titles and God should hang on to them forever. Well, Bruno, you see, we've been working out with each other for weeks now. You see how the combination is starting to gel, how it's coming together just like a glove on our hand, you see? Everything that we've been working for, it's coming. Everything is coming as we planned. So now all we'd like to have is that shot, that shot that we, every, every wrestler is looking for, the World Championship Tag Team. And you know, with God's help, we're going to win it. So if the opportunity presents itself, you guys feel that you have been together and done enough work together that you can go ahead and take it right now, if the, like I say, if the opportunity presented itself. Bruno, there's no doubt in our mind. We've, we've discussed this. Pusky has had me working out for uh, three months, and we've discussed this, and uh, I think we've got it all together, I guarantee you. I promise the people that when me and Pusky go up against the Valiants, we're going to give them a run for their money, and with God's help, we're going to be up on top, baby. Well, thank you very much. The best of luck to you both. I know thank you're going to you, go Bruno. away, and Vince, back to you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. A super champ like this Bruno Sammartino and Tito Santana and Ivan Putski. We shall return with Larry Zabesco, an individual competition in just a moment. This is the final event. It is set for one fall to the curfew. Introducing in the corner to my right from Springfield, Massachusetts, weighing 253 pounds, Dave Darrow. And his opponent, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 231 pounds, Larry Zabisco. Larry Zabisco against Dave Darrow. We're set for action to begin. A couple of uh, nice executions there by both Zabisco and his opposition, Dave Darrell. Maybe we have a scientific match going here, Bruno. So thus far it is, uh, Vince, and like you say, there have been some beautiful moves made by both men. See if they'll keep it up or if somebody gets a little more aggressive with the other thus far. Speaking of aggressive, uh, you know, Putski and Santana, one thing that I like about their tag team combination and their chances of a future success is that uh, they just don't take uh, any guff from anyone, do they? They just keep right at you. And you really got to be that way, uh, Vince. You've got to be that way. And they're both very fired up men. And uh, I'll tell you, I have all the confidence in the world, Vince, as we were discussing earlier. These two guys have given the opportunity. They will go all the way. Again, we'd like to uh, express our uh, best wishes to Frank Williams recuperating after the uh, result of uh, a neck breaker applied by Big Swede Hansen. We saw Hansen, of course, earlier this week uh, in a rather unusual hold uh, that he called a neck breaker uh, uh, when we asked him later what hold it was he used when he, against Pete Sanchez. If it was a neck breaker, it was the most unusual one I've ever seen, Bruno. It was a first for me because I'd never seen that hold uh, being executed before. And the way it looked to me was one that really required for quite a bit of strength to use. And Sweet, of course, is plenty of that. And of course, uh, in the opening contest uh, this week, uh, uh, talk about fine tag team combinations and two veterans in there. Uh, Chief Jay Strongbow and Dominic Danucci. Yep, you said it, Vince. They, uh, they are veterans. They've been in there a long time. They're, and uh, they work very well together. And oh. Zabisco hanging on to the side headlock, doing well with it thus far. What about the match we saw with, uh, we call him the Arab, which uh, is not really appropriate. His name is Hussein. He is a uh, Iranian, but uh, and of Arab uh, extraction. Well, we know how tough Hussein is. I mean, he's proven time and again and again. It's about, that bout was a great bout, but what was impressive to me was the punishment that uh, 
that uh, Rivera was able to take. The heart he had to fight back with Hussein. He made a good count of himself, even though unfortunately he met with a couple of suplexes and lost the bout. But it was just a very interesting and very fast moving bout. Incidentally, we raised the question about whether or not the, the blood from uh, uh, Johnny Rivera was uh, blood from internal organs, you know, uh, as opposed to uh, the uh, busted lip. We're happy to report it was a busted lip and not something. Ooh, count of two, almost, almost three there on Zabisco. Small package wrap up. He nails it. Larry Zabisco gets a hand here from the fans. And uh, wrapping up things here in a rather scientific match against Dave Darrell. Let's get the official time, if we may. The time of the match, 3 minutes, 38 seconds, and your winner, Larry Zabisco. Larry Zabisco, victorious, I'm sure we'll be seeing uh, quite a bit of Mr. Zabisco in the weeks to come. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, the will appear here will be uh, Jerry Valiant. And Jerry Valiant meeting individual company here. Bruno Sammartino saying so long from ringside.